deal with it. Yeah. So, Lorenz's law. Question number one. The first question asks, Just stick here. Here we have Lorenz's law. And the first question asks question one it says, One reason why we know that magnetic fields are not the same as electric fields is so one reason why magnetic fields why we know magnetic fields is not the same as electric fields is because the force exerted on a charge plus q so the force exerted on a charge plus q now here's the options this force is in the same direction in electric and magnetic fields can that be true let me just ask okay I know some of you are hesitant to answer online. So, let's just say, question number A. Yes, the force exerted on a charge plus Q can be the is in the same can be in the same direction in elect in electric and magnetic field. So, the forces can be in the same direction because the force due to a magnetic field is calculated as such while the force in an electric field so this is force for a magnetic field fm and the force for an electric field is qe okay these two forces can be in the same direction okay they can be in the same direction so a a is true so a is true let's move on option b it says this force is in opposite directions in electric and magnetic fields no it's not always in opposite directions as we've just established that force can be in the same direction for electric and magnetic fields because an electric field the force for an electric field just needs to be in the same direction as the electric field itself Forgive me. So now the force is in opposite directions in electric magnetic fields. They don't always have to be in opposite directions. They can be in the same direction, but they don't have to be in the same direction. In opposite directions, they can be in opposite directions, but not always. This force is parallel to a magnetic field and perpendicular to an electric field. Now, this force is always, we are doing by f process of elimination now. This force, which is a Q, is always perpendicular to a magnetic field. Okay, So C is out. It's not parallel to a magnetic field. That force is always perpendicular to a magnetic magnetic field due to the Lorentz force law. Okay, this force is zero in both if the charge is not moving. Okay, the force if the charge is not moving in the electric field, it still has a force acting on it. So that one is out. So both C and D are out. Let's see E. This force is parallel to an electric field. And perpendicular to a magnetic field. This force doesn't have to be parallel to an electric field. It can be perpendicular to an electric field as well. So that one is out as well. E. So let's go look at A and B. They are the only two left. So we've said A is true. A can be. A, they can be in the same direction, and it's in opposite directions in electric and magnetic fields. They are not in always in opposite directions. They can be in the same directions as we've already established. Okay, because this one needs to be perpendicular to the magnetic field, but this force can be in its the same direction as the magnetic force. So A is the correct option for number one. The answer is A. 
you need to do that by process of elimination basically what this question wants to establish if you know what how do you calculate an electric force for an electric field the force is the charge multiplied by the electric field and it will be in the direction of the electric field for a magnetic force for a magnetic force the force will be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field now since let me just show you something quickly here this can be in any direction of the electric field we know that the magnetic and the electric field are perpendicular to each other okay which means this force can be in the same direction as the electric field which is in the same direction as that force so the two forces can indeed that is a mathematical proof that an electric force and a magnetic force can indeed be in the same direction okay uh, everyone clear on that that was a formula just to try and test if you do understand the electric and magnetic forces okay let's go on to question number two question number two Question two. Question two asks, a spatially uniform magnetic field cannot exert a magnetic force on a particle. So for all of these questions, I will always write down what, how you calculate the force. Okay, It's Q, V, which is a vector, and a magnetic field, which is also a vector. Now, a spatially uniform magnetic field, that means the magnetic field is the same in all directions, cannot exert a magnetic force on a particle in which, one, in which of the following circumstances. So when will F be, be zero? So when will F be, be zero? Okay. When will that occur? Okay. It will occur when Q is zero, the particle is at rest and the magnetic field is zero okay so that is when this the magnetic field will be zero in all directions but they say that the magnetic field is uniform in all directions so this is when so we need to determine when will the magnetic field be zero when will this magnetic field force be zero Sorry, the magnetic force. When will the force be zero? So when the charge is zero and when the velocity is zero and the magnetic field is zero. That's when the force will be zero. And they tell us that there may be more than one correct statement. So let's see which one of these statements is correct. A. The particle moves perpendicular to the field, to the magnetic field. Let's see, if the particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field, remember you can write this as V cross B as well. So, if the particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field, let's leave that one for now. Let's move to number B. Let's see if it can be correct. The particle is charged. If the particle is charged, okay, then it can not be zero. Okay, it must have a value because there's a uniform magnetic field and this particle is moving. Okay, it, it has a charge. If the magnetic field of the if the magnitude of the magnetic field changes with time, even if it does change with time, the force will not be zero. If the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field, that is when this force will be zero when the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field it must be at an angle to the magnetic field. if it moves parallel to the magnetic field the magnetic field will not uh, uh, have a, an effect on it okay so it will not uh, create a force on the particle if the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field a force will not be induced on the particle because of this law let me just rewrite this thing let me rewrite something here this is the same law i'm going to rewrite it this way q v 
d sine of theta where theta this is the exact same law it's written in two ways okay let's use law number two you see the magnetic field will be zero when q is zero b is zero d is zero or the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is zero meaning it is parallel so if any one of these four things if this q is zero if the charge is zero its velocity is zero the magnetic field is zero or if the angle between them is zero meaning if they are parallel then this force will be zero if one of those conditions are met the force will be zero now we've already established the particle is charged so it won't be zero the magnitude of the magnetic field changes with time it does change with time but it's not zero so the magnetic force won't be zero the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field so number one d our first correct statement that will give the that will ensure that this magnetic force is zero and if the particle is at rest the magnetic force will be zero meaning its v is zero so e is also a correct option and then we skipped a if the particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field that means theta is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees is 1 so a is also correct so these three st statements a d and e a d and e will all be correct okay they will all result in a magnetic force of zero okay everyone understand that everyone understand that guys that are listening specifically Ani. you guys okay so the magnetic field will only be zero if one of these concepts is zero okay thank you now let's move on question number three this all by the way has to do with magnetic fields okay and a lot of these questions trip students up in during the exams which is coming very closer by the day okay a proton moving horizontally a proton let's say this is a proton moving horizontally enters a magnetic field okay the magnetic field is into the page This is where your right hand rule <coughs> comes into effect. <coughs> a proton moving horizontally enters a magnetic field. So the proton has a V where a uniform magnetic field is directed perpendicular to the proton's velocity as shown. Okay. After the proton enters the field, does it? Let's try to see what happens using the right hand rule. So, if you point your outstretched fingers in the direction of movement and your thumb in the direction of the magnetic field, okay, and curl your fingers, it will be in the direction of the magnetic force, okay? So, if your outstretched fingers, let's say your outstretched fingers, this is your outstretched fingers, four fingers forgive me this will be your thumb pointing into the page okay now if you were to curl your fingers it will curl this way downwards okay meaning the force of this magnetic field will move the particle downwards the force on the particle will be downwards okay so the particle will begin to move okay so let's say this is a particle the force of the particle will be downwards so the particle will start there then it will move there it will start to move downwards the particle will start to move downwards okay but here's the thing once the particle starts moving downwards its velocity changes in that direction now if you point your hand with your thumb pointing into the page and your finger still pointing in that direction with your thumb into the page Sorry, that was extremely ugly fingers. 
Okay, the velocity is now in this direction. Okay, if you now point your fingers in that direction, the fingers of your right hand with your thumb pointing into the page and you point it downwards at an angle, you will find that the force is now pointing inwards. Okay, so the force is now pointing inwards. Okay, and that will continue to happen. The force will continue to be pointing inwards all the way around, meaning eventually the particle will move like this with the force pointing inwards first down then that way inwards the force will continuously be pointing inwards meaning this magnetic field is going to trap this particle move it and move it in a circle okay so this is what's going to happen this magnetic field is going to trap that particle and move it in a circular orbit okay move it in a circular orbit so this is what's going to happen to this particle okay and this is all explained using your right hand rule you guys need to be get comfortable to pointing to using your right hand rule okay there are many variations to using the right hand rule i choose to point my thumb in the direction of the magnetic field my outstretched fingers in the direction of the particle's velocity and then curl my hands in the direction of the force okay that is how i use the right hand rule so we have established that this particle if it moves into that electric that magnetic field it will start orbiting in a circle so it will start orbiting in a circle okay so we need to select one or more of these options on what it's going to move in a circle orbit with constant speed and become trapped by the field yes then it's going to deflect downward with its speed remaining now it's going to start mm, orbiting in a circular direction it's going to deflect upward no that can't happen here's the thing if you do use your left hand by mistake it's going to show that it's deflecting upwards it's going to continue moving in the horizontal direction no because the if the magnetic field will have an effect on it it's going to deflect it somehow it's going to deflect it out of the plane of the paper. No. It can only deflect it out of the plane of the paper if the force was pointing downward. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The correct option for question number three is B. Question number three's answer is B. Let me just show you something quickly here. The right-hand rule, when you use it, I usually use it this way let's say this is a right hand the direction of my thumb my outstretched fingers okay and then underneath I have my palm okay my palm will point in the direction of the force my outstretched fingers points in the direction okay let me just I need to actually my outstretched fingers points in the direction of the velocity of the particle and in that direction is the direction of the magnetic field my thumb in this case i had to draw my thumb i actually have to draw i needed to draw it at an angle okay but you guys get the picture the thumb in that direction into the page okay so these are all questions on how you use the right hand rule and the magnetic field so let's see yeah not a lot of calculations in this part because of this and by the way these things cause a lot of marks okay they are easy marks okay so a charged particle is traveling through a uniform magnetic field which of the following statements are true of the magnetic field? Okay, so we have some charged particle. It has a charge positive, let's say positive, and it's traveling through some magnetic field. Okay, it's traveling through a magnetic field. Now, I'm just trying to picture this. Okay, so we have a charged particle traveling through a magnetic field. That's the magnetic field going into the page. We have a charged particle. Now, they give you uh, for some options there, some statements, and they ask you which of those statements are true. 
for the magnetic field. Okay. Does that magnetic field, A, does it increase the kinetic energy of the particle? No, it does not increase the kinetic energy of the particle. It moves at a constant speed, so it doesn't increase the kinetic energy of the particle. It stays the same. B, the magnetic field, does it exert a force that is perpendicular to the direction of motion? Yes. Let's see the law. The force is equal to Q V cross B. This is another variation of that force law. Okay. Now, <clears throat> does this magnetic field exert a force that is perpendicular to the direction of motion? Okay. If the direction of motion is in that way, then the force will be perpendicular to the direction of motion. Okay. The force will be perpendicular to the direction of motion. But not always exactly perpendicular. Okay, there are some, although they do state here that it's a magnetic field, a uh, uniform magnetic field. So, no, it does not exert a force perpendicular to the direction of mode. Well, yes, it does exert a force. So, A is false. It does not increase the kinetic energy of the particle, but B it exerts a force that is perpendicular to the direction of motion. Okay, a charged particle moving in a magnetic field does indeed, the magnetic field does indeed exert a force on perpendicular to that motion. Okay. As you can calculate using the right hand rule, they are all perpendicular to each other. So the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So B is correct, so B is the correct option. It exerts a force on the particle parallel to the electric field that is wrong. E, D, it does not change the magnitude of the momentum of the particle, okay? It does not change the magnitude of the momentum. Let's just check, what is momentum? Momentum is mass times the velocity. The particle's mass stays the same and we've already established that its velocity stays the same, so its momentum does not change. Okay, so the mag so the magnetic field does not change the momentum of the particle. So D is correct. And then number E, it exerts a force on the particle along the direction of its motion. That is wrong. It does not. exert a force along its direction of motion the force is exerted perpendicular to the direction of motion it alters the direction of the velocity it doesn't change the velocity itself so b and d are correct options okay Let's see question five. Here they want to know what is the direction of the magnetic field acting on a positively charged particle moving in the situation shown in the figure below. So what's the direction of the magnetic field acting on that positively charged particle in the situation below? If the direction of the magnetic force is upwards so we have the force going upwards so we let's say we have our outstretched palm pointing upwards and then the velocity is coming out so have your palm stretch out the palm of your right hand stretched upwards well pushing upwards that's the direction of the force and then your fingers coming out towards you you will see that the magnetic field or your thumb in this case is along let's just draw it first now here's where some may differ i usually put x here y here and z here the force is in this direction as indicated 
the velocity is in this direction as indicated now using both of that we find that the magnetic field is in the negative y direction so it is in the negative y direction so it's in the negative y direction according to my drawing this is according to my drawing it's in the negative y direction according to my drawing of the axis okay some people put z here going outwards and then have it in the negative x direction so basically what i'm saying it is according to this and my right hand rule it will be in the to the towards the left See, the magnetic field will be in this direction this will be depends on how you draw your axis the magnetic field will be in the towards the negative y axis or towards the left Question number six. Now, if you have any questions, you need to ask. If you don't understand anything, all of this is just using the right-hand rule. Now, a magnetic field is directed out of the page. So, immediately you can point. Your thumb out of the page. Let's say you're pointing your thumb out of the page. Okay. Two charged particles enter from the top. And they make parts as shown in the figure. Okay, so two charged particles outstretch fingers in the direction downwards. Magnetic field is towards out of the page. Okay. And they take the part shown in the figure. Okay. What can we say about these two particles? Now we know for a positive particle, the force. If the magnetic field is out of the page, then using our right-hand rule, we can show that pointing our thumb out of the page or towards us with the magnetic field, with the force going downwards because it's injected from the top. We can show that for, the, for a positive charge, for a positive charge, the force will be in that direction. Now, it will be exactly opposite for a negative charge. So, it will be that way. So, what we can say is that in that situation, number one is negative and number two is positive. Okay. Let's see if we are correct. Particle one has a negative charge and particle two has a positive charge. Okay. Particle one has a negative charge and particle two has a positive charge. Both particles are not positively charged because they will then be pointed in the same direction. Both particles are negatively charged for the same reason. They are not pointing in the same direction. The direction of the pass depends on the magnitude of the velocity, not on the, the sign does play a role in this case. And then particle 1 has a positive charge and particle 2 has a negative charge. No, it's the other way around. Particle 1 has a negative. Okay, so question 7. A charged particle moves into a region containing both an electric field and a magnetic field. Which of these statements are true? So a charged particle moves into a region containing both an electric field and a magnetic field. <coughs> Which of the following three statements are true? A. The particle cannot accelerate in the direction of B. The particle cannot accelerate in the direction of B. So the magnetic field. Can the particle accelerate in the direction of the magnetic field? Yes, it can. Let's see. So magnetic field and, a, and an electric field are always perpendicular to each other. Okay. Force is equal to QV cross B. That's magnetic force B and that's electric force QE. Now, 
magnetic field and electric field are always perpendicular to each other. Right. And as we've established earlier, the force can be in the same direction. Okay. So the particle can accelerate in the direction of the magnetic field. So A can be correct. Now B, the path of the particle must be a circle. Nope, it does not have to be a circle. It does not have to be a circle. And C, any change in the particle's kinetic energy is caused by the electric field. That is true. So A and C are true. A and C are true. Both A and C are true. Number seven. Question number eight. Question eight. A charge is released from rest in electric and magnetic fields. Yes, this is magnetic field. Just recap to number seven. Okay, option A. Uh, the particle can accelerate in the direction of the magnetic field because the lens or Lorentz force does not prevent motion along the magnetic field. Okay, so that is true. And we said that option B is false, and the reason for that is the particle's movement is not limited to a circle. We've established that. And then option C. Both the magnetic field and the electric field can cause changes in the particle's energy. The particle can accelerate. So, let me just say, they ask which of the statements is true, okay? The particle cannot accelerate in the direction of B. It can accelerate in the direction of B. So this one is false. The particle must be a circle. No, it does not have to be a circle. Any change in the particle's kinetic energy is caused by the electric field. No, the magnetic field can also cause a change. So we have that A is false. Sorry, I did not read the statement which of the is false, which is true. Okay, so which is true. So this one is not true. Okay. I did not read that. Cannot. Okay. The particle cannot accelerate in the direction of B. It can accelerate in the direction of B. As we've established earlier. So this one is false. B is false as well. And C is also false. So all three of them are false. Uh, none are true. So number four. None are true. None are true. None are true. Okay, I did not. The particle can accelerate. Look at that. Cannot there. That negation. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So, none are true. Let's move on to this one. A charge is released from rest in electric and magnetic fields. Both fields point along the x-axis. Which of the following statements regarding the charge's motion is correct? So, we have electric and magnetic fields pointing along the x-axis. Okay. 
which of the following statements regarding the charge of motion are correct okay so the charge will travel along a straight line path okay that cannot be it will not travel along a straight line path because the magnetic field the force the force due to the electric field will be towards the right and the force due to the magnetic field will be upwards or downwards it will, or it will just be perpendicular so it will not travel in a straight line okay the charge's speed will change as it travels okay and we've established here that the kinetic energy can change can be changed by both electric and magnetic fields so the charge's speed will change as it travels yes that is true the charge will travel in a helical path it can we want to know which of this it doesn't need to it we can't for sure say that it will travel in a helical path we can for sure say it will not travel along a strain path its kinetic energy will change we cannot say it will travel along helical path we cannot say that it will travel along a helical path of increased pitch and we cannot say if it will travel in a circle in the x-y plane let's see if it's traveling the magnetic field is that way it's released from rest if the force moves it that way so for now we can say that two is correct its speed will change we cannot say for sure if you will travel in a circle in the xy plane question eight question nine wait i have question eight here let me check now a charge has initial velocity parallel to the y-axis so its velocity we now know is parallel to the y-axis so its velocity is now parallel to the y-axis in this case with the magnetic and electric fields pointing that way which of the following statements regarding the charges motion are correct so the same options but we've been given now the direction of velocity okay so if the velocity is in this direction then the electric field has a component in that direction it doesn't have to be upwards it can be downwards as well so parallel meaning that the electric field has a vertical component which of the following statements regarding the charge of motion are correct a charge will travel along a straight line path no the charge's speed will change as it's traveling the electric field they, they might change it yes so two might be correct The charge will travel in a helical path. No. If the force is upwards there. That so let's do it by process of elimination. Okay, so. The charge will travel in a circle in the XY plane now because the force will not allow that. The Lorentz force, the right hand rule. The charge will travel in a helical path of increased pitch. No. Charge will travel in a helical path. It might. So three and two. If it travels in a helical path, the charge's speed will change as it travels. Yes, the path will travel along a straight line. No. 
So Was it Kevlar in a helical part? Oh no, the electrical candle itself. Only two. Now, let's look at question number 10. The first actual question where we have to calculate. Okay, so. A magnetic field exerts a torque on each of the current carrying single loops of wire shown below. The loops lie in the XY plane, each carrying the same magnitude current, and the uniform magnetic field points in the positive X direction. Which of the following ranks the loops by the magnitude of the torque exerted on them by the field from largest to smallest? Okay. So the area for block number one. Okay, let's go to block for loop A, let's call it just loop A. Let's calculate the torque for loop A. Let's calculate the torque for loop A. So, we have that the area is equal to 2 meters squared. You can calculate that. Then we have that the dipole moment, let's calculate the dipole moment, is equal to the current crossed with the area which in this case is just 2 times i okay, 2 times i now we know that torque is equal to dipole moment times magnetic field okay. we have the dipole moment it's 2i so it's 2i times b Two i b sine of ninety, since the two the dipole moment and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other, so it's two i b. Two i b is the torque for loop a. So two i b is the torque for loop a. The torque for the circular path. The torque for b is equal to the area is equal to the dipole moment times the magnetic field. Now the dipole moment here for loop B is the same as the previous one. It's just area multiplied by current the current so the area if you work it out is 0.78 the area of that circle is 0.78 its radius is 0.5 so 0.5 squared times pi is 0.78 multiplied by i which is the current that flows in all of them so the torque in b is 0.78 multiplied by magnetic field the torque for a remember was equal to 2 ib this is 0 0.78 ib so a is bigger than b so let's look at loop c loop c it is a triangle we have that the area of the triangle is 1.5. You can work it out. A half base times perpendicular height is 1.5 meters squared. That's the area for loop number C, the triangle. Okay. The dipole moment is equal to area times current, which is just 1.5 times I is a dipole moment and the torque for C is dipole moment times magnetic field which is equal to 1.5 times the magnetic field 1.5 I times the magnetic field B so now we have the torque 
for A, talk for B, and the talk for C. Quickly calculated all of them. Talk for A is 2IB. Talk for B is 0.78 IB. And the talk for C is 1.5 IB. Now arranging them in order from largest to smallest, it will be A, the talk from A is bigger than the talk from C, which is bigger than the talk from B. Okay? And that's how you rank them. A, C, B. So A, C, then B. So number four is the correct one. Now I know I went through this part is because you don't do a much a lot of work on the talks that is for third year level. Anyway, that is all the time that we have time for today. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day and join Arnold tomorrow. He will have a more lot more uh, calculation based questions. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. If there are no questions, I'm going to switch off now.